hydraulic here. So consider uh, a hydraulic jack being used to car used in a car repair shop. So this is the figure here. So you can see the piston cylinder devices here. So this is uh, you can see the end one at this section the area it is A. So we have this piston, a small piston, this is the large piston. For this small piston, we have the area A on, and we say that it is 0 0.08, and look at uh, the, the unit, it is in centimeter. Right, for the large on, you can see it is 0 0.04, and just see it is meter square. So, as I mentioned earlier uh, in my last lecture, that okay, we have to use the same uh, units when we will solve any problems so so that's the thing we need to keep in mind right so we know the area a1 a2 we know the f1 so f1 force we are applying here so this is our, you know the force f2 which is um, we're getting for this the larger piston so that we already discussed um, this sort of theories you already know this so here the hydraulic oil with a specific gravity of 0 0.870 so this is the specific gravity the materials here uh, it is hydro hydraulic oil and the specific gravity is given this right so it is pumped in as the small piston on the left side and pushed up and down slowly raising the the larger piston on the right side a car that weighed 13,000 newton is to be jacked off so yeah so this is the small piston you're just pushing the force here and it's just lifting this so we'll discuss so now the question is at the beginning what is the when the both pistons are at the same elevation so look at this same elevation means they're in the similar position let's say um when you just applied this force here so that means you're pushing and then the lift force you can see we can this force f2 it's just lifting this piston so maybe initially if i say it was something uh, like this i can say maybe the piston location was here for both small and the you know the large piston because in the question it says it is in the same elevation that means the height is zero so we can say let's let's say the, it was the position where it is the initially so that means on that time the haze the elevation is zero but now uh, you look here you just look here we have the piston here and we have the larger piston here so this distance we have got the elevation is haze so initially we said the elevation it is zero so now uh, you already know the theorem that okay if we have this is the small piston if we have the large piston here like this so let's say we have the fluid here if you have a point a here if you have a point b here in the same elevation according to the theories in same elevation the pressure it will be same so that we already know so there will be no pressure variation if the fluid is same so here we have the hydraulic oil so the fluid is same so that means there is no pressure variation at this stage like when there is no elevation that means a is equal zero so the first question is asking about at the beginning when both the pistons are in the same elevation calculate the force f on so we are applying the force f on and what amount of force you need to required to hold the weight of the car so let's say the car is here so suppose the car is here so you just actually want to lift the car so now first of all we need to calculate the force a one and our assumption is both the piston are in the same elevation that means it is the pressure at that point must be same let's say we say this is the point a this is the point b so at both point the pressure will be same so we'll see here um, when we'll solve the first part of this problem we know that pressure it is equal force over area right at this section if we say the pressure is p1 if we say pressure is p2 here 
So when the elevation, that means the height is equal to zero, that means no elevation, we can write pressure P1, it is equal F1, A1, and P2, it is equal F2, A2. We know from this formula, look at this formula, so the pressure equal force over area. So if the elevation is zero, that means no elevation difference, then according to the theorem, the pressure at point A and point B it will be same, it will be equal. So we can write it like this, P1 equal P2, it is equal F1, A1, F2, A2. Or in other words, we can say F1, A1, it is equal F2, A2. We are looking for F1. So calculate F1. So F1, it will be, you know, F2 into A1 over A2. Right. So now substitute the values. We know um, the F, you see, um, we'll, um, we'll see the properties here. So you just look here, um, actually what we know, the car that weighs 13,000 Newton is to be jacked up. So that means we can say this is actually the F2, okay? Because this is actually the weight, the car weight. So we need that amount for F2. We need to lift that amount. So we can say it is 13,600 Newton. Right, area A1, it is given, if you look here, area A1 is given point, 0 0.8 centimeter square. So we'll write 0 0.8 centimeter square. And A2 is, you know, 0 0.04 meter square. So here you look, it is um, centimeter square, it is meter square. So convert this unit into meter square. So you can say 1 meter over it is hundred centimeter you know we know one meter equal one hundred centimeter and then the square so then this meter square this meter square we can cancel out this centimeter square centimeter square we can cancel out look we had a just the square over there so now if we calculate this value it will be 26 newton so that means if we actually want to it, let look at the question again so when the both piston in the same elevation calculate force f1 in newtons it clearly says in newtons so you must need to check this required to hold the weight of the car the weight of the car so the weight of the car is this so it was actually f2 so we see from here we are just if we apply 26 newton force 26 newton force here it will just lift the car this is how much it's 30 13 thousand newton so that's the first part of this problem so we have done and we have got the force f1 so now we know the force f1 so the second part of this question is asking about repeat the calculation after the car has been lifted two meters so let's say now there is some elevation elevation differences and this is actually h is equal to a meter. So when the elevation is h is equal to a meter, what is the, you know, um, just say, just repeat the calculation and calculate f1 again and just discuss it. So we said this h is, it is equal to a meter. In the state of, uh, initially the h is was zero. So now guys, um, I've got a question uh, you know due to the elevation differences there will be some pressure differences if it is in the same point same line in the same elevation no pressure differences and you already know the pressure actually it depends on we know the pressure at a certain height it is the density of the fluid okay the gravity and the elevation we know this we already know from the formula that okay pressure v equal so at a certain height it will be just rho g haze so we already know that at point 
P1, we can say P1, it is equal A1, A1, pressure equal force over area. And at P2 point here, at this point, due to this elevation haze, we need to just include that, that you know, rho g haze in our calculation. So we can write it like this. We can write it as equal P2 plus rho g haze and A2, A2 plus rho g haze. So look here, this is nothing. Um, but with, according to the question, it says, okay, you just repeat the same calculation for 2 meter height. So now we are just considering this because as there is the elevation differences, so we'll have, we need, when we calculate the pressure, it will be like this. So we must need to uh, consider this uh, elevation difference. So what we can write it down, we can say this A1, a1 it is equal you know a2 a2 plus rho g haze if we say okay because we are repeating this calculation so pressure p1 p2 if it is same then we will say okay a1 a1 equal f2 a2 plus rho g haze we need to calculate actually f1 so let's say f1 it is equal then we need to just uh, multiply a1 in the right hand side and definitely both um, side like in the right hand side in this both section so it will be kind of it will be like this f2 a1 a2 and rho g haze a1 in other words you can say um, you can just you can just multiply a1 in wall terms in the left and right hand side then this a1 a1 will cancel out and you will see then it will be just f1 and then f2 a1 a2 rho g haze a1 so now you already know all the values except the density we know gravity is constant haze equal 2 meter right and we know the area a1 area a2 and force f2 so we only don't know the density look here we need to calculate the density in the question you can remember we, we know the specific density the definition of the specific density we discussed last week during my lecture i already discussed it it is actually the ratio of the the density of the substance and the density of the water at a specific temperature like four degrees centigrade some standard conditions so if we know the specific gravity then we can easily calculate the density of that fluid the SG it is equal to rho over the density of the water. So we can write it down like this. We know the specific gravity, it is equal to density and the density of water at 4 degrees centigrade. So then if we say like this, rho it will be the specific gravity and density of water. So specific gravity here given um, according to the question is 0 0.870. And the water density, you know, we know um, actually water density is 1000 right we know 1000 so it is kg per meter cube kg per meter cube so it will be 870 kg per meter cube so that's the row we have got so now we know everything i will write it down here for you the pressure the force f1 it is equal f2 a1 a2 plus rho g is a1 Substitute all those values. F to 13,000 Newton. Area A1, I will convert it into centimeter square initially. So it is 0 0.0008 meter squared. And it is 0 0.04 meter squared. So you see this one, it was in centimeter square. I just converted into meter square. Right. So now, uh, what else? Density. 870 kg meter cube gravity 9.8 you know the gravity unit meter per second square um a haze two meter and area again we can say 0 0.00008 meter square yeah so if you we have got this so now if we just simplify this use the calculations and convert it into meter 
it should be 27.4 newton f1 so at 2 meter ele elevation when we when we just increase this elevation 2 meter we can see the force increases so that means you need more force to keep that car elevated initially the elevation it was zero h is equal zero now we have h is equal two h is equal two so when the elevation is increasing that means you need more force and that actually um, reasonable that makes sense because um, the elevation difference due to this elevation differences it generates high pressure so that means we need um, more forces to the lower piston this is some hydrostatics effect so um, that's all um, I believe you understand it